Right, normally tens of thousands of people would have been in Washington, D.C. this week to witness the swearing in of the newest president and vice president of the United States. Like a lot of things, though, these last 12 months, the normal pomp gave way to the current circumstance of the coronavirus. Didn't stop Idaho from being a part of that ceremony, though, as we've already told you about the Red Hot Mamas. But there may have been or there have been many other presidential inaugurations where Idahoans were integral, like in 2001, when seven students from Fruitland High School were invited to perform at then President George W. Bush's inaugural parade. Seven students in Fruitland have every reason to toot their own horns. This is like once in a lifetime I ever get to do this and I'm very excited. Tara. Brandon. Shane, Nikki, Bard, and Bill, just for rhythm. It's definitely an experience. I mean, I'm from Podunk, Fruland. I mean, we have 400 people in our high school. But come Saturday, Bard and friends step out in style in a parade of inaugural sorts. Living in Idaho, but part of the Troopers Drum and Bugle Corps out of Wyoming and requested specifically by our new Wyoming native VP. I marched in the Corps in 99 and 2000, and they said, well, anyone who marched before can come and play in this parade. And, you know, how are you going to refuse? It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Days before the parade performance, pressure builds. You have to march and play down the street. But not only that, you have to make sure you look exactly like everyone else, or then it's not worth going. After all, it's the most important parade in four years. And while everyone else has had plenty of practice time... We are pulling in people from 39 different places in this country, and the only rehearsal we're going to get is when we get back there to Washington, D.C. So we're going to put in some long days to get to march down the street and uh, get to see the president and uh, vice president and that whole thing that happens there in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. And not to toot their own horns, but... It's just an outstanding experience. Okay, so that story was before the 2001 inauguration. We wanted to find out what it was like during and after that once-in-a-lifetime outstanding experience. We tracked down Bart Ploker, the uh, trumpet player you saw in that story from 2001. That was his senior year of high school and had spent the previous three summers with the troopers, traveling by bus and visiting more than 30 states to perform. None bigger, though, than that District of Columbia parade. What sticks out the most for me, to be completely frank, is the fact that it was cold and raining. The entire time we were there, you know, rain's just running down, coming off the horns, and we're wearing these double-breasted uh, military-inspired uniforms. And it wasn't the most comfortable experience in the world. I think Drew Carey was there, and I remember him coming over and talking to some of the people in line at the parade. And uh, So it was, it was kind of neat to see a celebrity for a, for a small-town kid from Idaho. That was a deal. When you look back on that, I mean, do you think about how unique of an opportunity and how, how cool it was? Yeah, this is something that happens every four years. It's, there, there's only been a handful, 59 or some odd, whatever the number is. This has not been exactly something that happens every day. Uh, sort of like the year, it's pretty monumentous to be a part of it. Just being able to be a part of that, that ceremony of the democratic process, pretty remarkable. You know, it, it, it felt... It felt like the embodiment of, of patriotism in a lot of ways. Well, Bart graduated from the University of Idaho in 2005, and he now lives in South Dakota, works for a biofuels company, and he has three young kids. I asked if he still plays the trumpet, and he said occasionally, but the loud horn doesn't always mix with toddlers trying to sleep. Bart says he still keeps in touch with the troopers we traveled to D.C. with. And Joel Williams, by the way, he's still the band director for Fruitland High School. <laughs> 